Hey, this is Chris at Talon Gaming. Welcome back to another review. Phantom Doctrine is a turn-based strategy with an intelligence-gathering twist. It was produced by Creative Forge Games and published by Good Shepherd Entertainment in 2018. Set in the early 80s, Phantom Doctrine takes place during the Cold War in a world where brainwashing and global conspiracies reign true. You take the role of an intelligence operative leading a secretive organization known as the Cabal. You carry out secret missions, investigate classified files, and string together gathered intelligence to solve cases and unlock the identities of hostile agents. This is a single player game where you can play as an agent of either the CIA or the KGB. There isn't a lot of DLC here, but the deluxe edition does include the soundtrack. There's also a free Halloween DLC which adds some new clothing and visuals for your character. The system requirements are quite low. Any modern dual core or quad core machine should have no trouble. You will need about 35 gigs of storage though. But use the network. There are two main aspects to the game, combat and the hideout. We'll start with the hideout. This is where your agents and facilities reside. You'll be able to move to unique locations once your location has been compromised and every location is in a different style of building with a unique layout. The hideout consists of a handful of different facility types so let's dig into a few of those. The espionage network is the primary global map screen which you'll be working from for the most part. This allows you to track, monitor, and investigate suspicious activities. You'll be able to assign and move agents between locations, start various mission types, some of which don't require a shift to combat, and others which are conducted without further input. You'll also be working with informants to procure intelligence on cases and hostile agents. Next you have the investigation board which is used to examine and link together gathered intelligence to solve cases. Here you'll be scanning over documents where you can tag people and places which are then connected via strings between intel pinned to the board. It's pretty cool, it's essentially a puzzle metagame. It's pretty interesting. And if you don't find it interesting, the next facility, the analytics facility, will actually allow the agents to run the investigation board for you, so you can focus your time elsewhere. The crew quarters facility allows you to manage your agents, both hire and fire, as well as oversee agent training and perks. It allows you to buy and sell, as well as configure weapon and equipment loadouts. You also have access to the infirmary, which allows you to heal and monitor your injured agents. The workshop allows you to invest in facility and tech upgrades, as well as manufacture equipment such as grenades, lockpicks, and first aid kits. The forger facility allows you to create counterfeit currency to cover operating costs. It will also allow you to monitor agent identity compromisation and create new identities when required. There are several more, such as body engineering, MK Ultra interrogation and brainwashing, as well as communication facilities unlocked as you progress through the game. Combat usually starts by getting dropped off in a van and a choice of several deployment zones. Mission goals include intelligence gathering, assaulting hostile agencies, assassinations, and many more. Quite often you'll try to avoid suspicion from guards, hostile agents, and civilians, while disabling security systems to complete mission objectives. You employ disguises to help agents blend in so you can enter restricted zones without raising suspicion. Support agents, when available, can provide real-time intelligence to areas covered by the fog of war from outside of the play area. Upon discovery and raising alarms, reinforcements and airstrikes will often arrive several turns later. Many different weapons and weapon types, each with various firing modes and specifications, as well as various attachments, you have several different grenade types to choose from, as well as flashbangs and med kits. Additionally, each agent has special abilities that can be employed, things like using lasers to disrupt enemies, and picking up disabled hostile agents that you can take back for interrogation. Upon mission completion, you'll call for an evac, a countdown timer will start, and you'll need to reach the extraction point before the timer runs out. Miss the extraction and you'll need to wait all over again. With that over with, let's talk about graphics. Textures in some cases are quite good and in others pretty bland. From very realistic looking water and rain to some pretty flat looking clothing and scenery. Bolt. Animations aren't bad but I've seen better, even in much older titles. Cutscenes are okay, they're not going to win any awards, but they do help provide some context to the rest of the game. All in all, the graphics are reasonably good and don't harm the overall game experience in any measurable way. I've played plenty of fantastic games with way worse graphics. Sound effects aren't too bad. They're not hyper-realistic, but sound good enough to not betray any sort of realism. The music is pretty standard video game fare. It's there and it changes depending on the action to help set the mood. It's not intrusive and helps immerse you into the theme of the game. So that's good, right? Voice acting, as in many games, is hit or miss. Some of the voice actors seem quite confident, while others seem like they were rustled up at the local high school drama club. 
It's big, Steve. The backstory consists of an introductory video of a ship and a submarine, along with some chatter from various intelligence organizations. It lets you know you're going to play with some spies, but not much else. The ongoing storyline throughout the game, through the missions, briefings, and the after-action reports, is minimal at best. Although you do get bits and pieces through intelligence gathering, still, the plot is a bit on the thin side. One tidbit here, though, is some of the happenings in the game are tied to real historic events, such so as the U.S. Embassy bombing in Beirut. I thought this was an interesting twist that did Operation add a little bit Walter to the story. Prunebolt. You're looking hard to Alright, let's take a moment and talk about gameplay. The metagame stuff, the other aspects outside of combat were all quite interesting and unique from other games in the genre. Although there's room for improvement, this could easily be expanded upon in future games. We'll see what happens when the second one comes out. I found many of the game mechanics a little weird. Walking up to an enemy agent and shooting them point blank often results in no damage, and often several times in a row. What the hell's up with that? You'll often get shot at from under what you would think to be an impossible angle and completely out of view. Other times your agent will literally move out into view to get shot at. I found this part of the game needs some polish, but that's just part of the character of the game. Another thing I've noticed is the teleportation of agents and supplies. That, that seems broken. You could also start some missions while not even being in town. I don't know if this is something left in the game on purpose or a glaring omission, but it's funky to say the least. The game takes a while to get through, 40 or 50 hours, so if it turns out to be something you enjoy, you surely get your money's worth. Once you factor in the other two characters you can play as with some randomness thrown into the mix, Nonsense. you'll be able to go through the game several sectors, times without playing the same the game twice. I think the concept here is great, but to me you the execution falls different. short at least to some extent. I won't go as far as to say I didn't like it, but its combat quirkiness left me wanting more. On a few occasions I grew pretty upset at things happening that didn't make any kind of sense, more so than XCOM did. I really think a little more spit and polish could have sorted out some of the issues and other annoyances and improved the experience a fair bit. If you can accept that the game isn't perfect and has some quirky game mechanics, and you enjoy turn-based strategies with some mixed-in puzzle solving, then I think you might enjoy this and it's worth the investment. But if you can, get it while it's on sale. Of course, this is my review and my opinion. If, if you do look on Steam, the reviews are mostly quite positive, although some of my complaints do get mentioned. As always, thanks for watching everybody. I hope you enjoyed the video and if you did, go ahead and smash that like button to show us some love. We're looking forward to hearing your thoughts on both the video and the game in the comments below. This is Chris from Talent Gaming, signing off.